Hello, in this video I will demonstrate how we can use mass defect in nuclear calculations. There are two main ways in which you may be asked to calculate using mass defect. The first is to determine the binding energy of a single nucleus, and the second is to determine the energy released from a nuclear decay or from a fission or fusion reaction. First, the binding energy of a single nucleus. The binding energy is the energy required to separate a nucleus into its constituent nucleons, that is, protons and neutrons. It can be calculated from the mass defect, and that is the difference between the mass of the nucleus and the individual masses of all the nucleons. Common sense tells us that these numbers should be the same, but in reality the nucleus combined is lighter than the sum of its parts. To break the nucleus into its constituent parts, energy has to be added to overcome the strong nuclear force that binds the nucleons together. This energy has got to go somewhere, so it is converted to mass, giving the separated nucleons more mass than the combined nucleus. Binding energy can be calculated using the most famous equation of all, E equals mc squared, where E is the binding energy, M is the mass defect, and C is the speed of light in a vacuum. You may also be asked to determine the binding energy per nucleon. This is simply the binding energy divided by the number of nucleons that you have. Let's try an example. Calculate the binding energy per nucleon in electron volts of a helium-3 nucleus, where the mass of a helium-3 nucleus is 3.014931 U, U being the atomic mass unit. First, you'll need to look up the masses of protons and neutrons from your data booklet. So the mass of a proton, 1.007276 U, and the mass of a neutron, 1.008665 U. Notice how many significant figures I'm using. Mass defects are very, very small compared to the mass of the actual nucleons themselves. So we have to use all of the available significant figures in our calculation in order to get a reasonable answer. Let's work out the combined mass of the protons and neutrons that would make up a helium-3 nucleus. Helium-3 is made of two protons and one neutron, so the mass of the separated nucleons is two times 1.007276 plus 1.008665, which gives us a combined mass of 3.023217u. We can then work out the mass defect, which usually uses the lowercase delta symbol as the difference between the mass of the constituent nucleons and the mass of the helium-3 nucleus itself. So in this case, 3.02. 3217 minus 3.014931 gives us a mass defect of 0 0.008286u. Now, depending on your exam board or qualification, you may be provided with a shortcut on your data booklet in the form of u, the unified atomic mass unit, being presented in the units of mega electron volts per c squared. In this case, we would simply multiply the mass defect by 931.5, and that would give us the binding energy in mega electron volts, which in this case comes out to be 7.72 mega electron volts. If your exam board does not give you this shortcut, then you'd have to use the longer method, which is to convert U into kilograms, then multiply by C squared to get the energy in joules, and then finally convert that answer to electron volts. So let's try that quickly. So 0 0.008286 multiplied by 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27, multiplied by the speed of light squared, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 all squared, gives us 1.24 times 10 to the minus 27 
times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Finally, we can divide that number by 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. And that will give us the binding energy in electron volts, which comes out at 7.7 .7 times 10 to the power of 6 electron volts. So we get the same answer as the shortcut, we just have to do a few more calculations. Finally, to determine the binding energy per nucleon, we need to divide the binding energy, 7.7 .7 mega electron volts, by the number of nucleons here. This is a helium-3 atom, so it's three nucleons, two protons and one neutron. To give us our binding energy per nucleon of 2.6 mega electron volts, or 2.6 million electron volts per nucleon. A different situation in which you may need to use mass defect is in nuclear decay, fission or fusion reactions. In these cases, the mass of the reactants does not quite equal the mass of the products because energy has either been released or absorbed. Again, remember that on the nuclear scale, there is nowhere else for energy to go other than to be converted to mass. The method for these problems is to work out the combined mass before and after the reaction, work out the mass defect and convert this into energy. For example, determine the energy released in this fission reaction. We have uranium-235 being combined with a neutron to produce the daughter nuclei rubidium-93, cesium-141 and two spare neutrons. We've been provided with the masses of the uranium-235, rubidium-93 and cesium-141 uh, in atomic mass units. First of all, we need to calculate the mass before the reaction. So we need to add the mass of the uranium, 235.04392991. Again, we're going to have to use all these significant figures. Plus the mass of a neutron, which you would look up on your data booklet is 1.008665, which will give us a combined mass of 236.052594. 918U. Then we calculate the mass after the reaction. So the mass of the rubidium is 92.922041876 plus the mass of the cesium, which is 140.920045752 plus the mass of two neutrons, that's two times 1.008665, and that will give us a combined mass of 235.8594176281U. So from these two values, we can find the mass defect, which is the difference between these two numbers, and that comes out to be 0 0.1931772U. Notice that the mass before is larger than the mass after. The fact that the mass has decreased tells us that some of that mass must have been converted to energy and therefore energy is released in this reaction. So we can take our shortcut as before to determine the binding energy E, which will be 0 0.1931729 multiplied by 931.5 from your data booklet to give us an answer of 180 mega electron volts. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, Please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.